What's up guys, Aaron here with uh, Metro East Libertarians. Um, here to talk about something that's been going on the internet, uh, I don't know, probably this week I guess, uh, which has to do with Nicholas Sarwark had made some comments that uh, you know he didn't agree with Ron Paul on the uh, states rights issue or the issue of states rights. And uh, you know, a couple things, full disclosure before we get started, uh, number one, this is the first year since 2009 that I am not an official Metro East Libertarians chapter officer. So that's kind of cool. Uh, we got all new people that have taken over, which is great, which means our chapter is growing and changing, and there's going to be you know, different outlooks and different uh, you know, leadership and everything going on in the chapter. Very excited about that. Uh, secondly, I didn't actually listen to the interview with Sarwark, and which I believe was done on the Lions of Liberty podcast. If you don't listen to that podcast, it's pretty good. You should check it out. Um, okay, so I'm not fully aware of the argument that was made. I know a little bit of how uh, Sarwark defended his position, that he is for individual rights, which I agree with. Um, and I've also heard that uh, Sarwark mischaracterized Ron Paul's position of states' rights. So I'm not actually going to touch on any of that, unfortunately, and I'm not trying to use that to bait people in. What I am going to touch on is this idea, because I saw this come up again, uh, from Eric July. If you Look, if you don't follow Eric July on Facebook and Twitter and things like that, you're doing yourself a major disservice. Eric July is an awesome ANCAP, great intellectual, Puts out some good music, which is like a nice uh, side benefit, if you will, of following Eric July, as seen as music. Uh, it may or may not be your style. Don't blame that on me. Anyway, the guy's phenomenal. And I, he's probably more well-read than I am. He's definitely got a much bigger following than I have. But so Eric July put out a live stream today, basically kind of saying why he doesn't like the LP. And... Here, here's the thing. I'm not attacking Eric's position. I'm not attacking the fact that he did this. What I am attacking is this whole idea that people... It's like every time someone in the LP, and I get that this is our party chairman, our national chairman, that may, may have messed up in people's eyes. Every time someone missteps... Uh, sorry, I'm self-producing here, so... I'm looking at an audio warning here. Okay. People immediately say, oh, this is why the LP is a joke. This is why I can't support the LP. Uh, this is why the LP will never have electoral success and those types of things. It doesn't matter what it is. Uh, I started paying attention to this. I mean, again, I've been active in the LP since 2009. Plenty of people that have been active way longer than I am, and I'm sure they would... Perhaps they would say the same things that I'm saying right now. Is that earlier this year, the uh, you know the Alabama Mississippi party did a live stream of the presidential debate. Internet just explodes because the quality was really bad, and and, and I agree the quality was terrible. But then the internet explodes. Oh, this is why the LP is a joke. Okay, because because we put out a poor quality live stream. All right, so well, it just so happens we don't have Fox News and MSNBC and CNN beating down our door to come in and host and produce and moderate every one of our debates. Okay, I get that. Uh, the next thing you know, and this is a valid criticism, I believe, Gary Johnson and Bill Weld get the uh, presidential nomination. Internet explodes again. Well-meaning, intellectual, super smart libertarians coming out and saying, this is why the LP will never have success. Look at these people they nominated. These are not libertarians. Now, <clears throat> that charge is somewhat correct. I'm not going to defend Gary Johnson. I'm absolutely not going to apologize for Bill Weld. What I will say is this. That criticism, in my opinion misses the entire point. Eric July's live stream was 
was about an outside perspective, someone who's not involved with the LP, uh, talking about what they saw from the outside. This one I want to give you is what I see from the inside. First of all, there's no such thing as the Libertarian Party. That does not, that's not a thing that, that goes out and does things. The Libertarian Party does not engage in activism. The Libertarian Party does not engage in electoral politics. What there is are 50 state affiliates which make up, that are, that are sort of joined to the National Party, which consists of activists at the local level, state level, and to some extent the national level. So to say the LP is doing something is basically the same thing as saying, you know, any other group just does things, which as, as individualists and independent thinkers, you know, we're not really, I wouldn't expect libertarians to engage in that type of behavior. Uh, this type of intellectual jump to say the Libertarian Party. So when you say the Libertarian Party should do X, you're saying I should do X. When you say, you know, the Libertarian Party's not doing what I want it to do or what I think they should do, you're saying that my friends up in Chicago that are great activists are letting you down. It's total, it's a total, uh, I just don't think it's being intellectually honest is what I'm getting at. Now, to further that point, if you don't, first of all, we didn't have good choices for the presidential nomination. So I want you, if you're really critical of the LP, go back and look who threw their name in the hat and tell me someone who could get some national attention and, you know, was well-spoken and very respectable, didn't have a bunch of skeletons in the closet. Not that Donald Trump or Hillary Clinton didn't have a bunch of skeletons in the closet, like literal skeletons probably. But, you know, tell me, like, who was better? And I, and I get the argument that we should have picked someone more uh, intellectual, you know, more principled, more, more intellectually libertarian, someone who could, who could um, you know, really talk the talk well. But look, I, I'm sympathetic to that, okay? Tom Woods has put that forth. I agree with him wholeheartedly. Uh, I don't really, well, anyway, I wasn't at the convention. And if I was, I don't know who I would have voted for, because again, there were no good choices. But all the people complaining about how the LP is so bad and it's not going in the direction that they want it to go, I mean, you're talking about a party where state conventions, now I don't want to talk for some of the bigger uh, state affiliates like Indiana, Ohio, I hear Washington's pretty big, California. I'm not talking about them. You get into these smaller fillets, man, Mississippi and Alabama, they don't even have a separate convention. The two states have one convention, right? In Illinois, we have, you know, 50, 100 people show up to our convention. Okay, if all the people in Illinois that complain about how bad the party is showed up to the convention, they could change the face of the party. Now, if you're a Republican and the Republicans hate you and you're thinking about taking another LP, forget what I just said. We're huge, we're strong, you're never going to take control. What I'm getting at is, all the people that complain it's not going in the right direction honestly have the power to shape the direction. Like, literally. It's such a small party, such a small group of activists, that you can, you can make it what you want to make it. Furthermore, I always hear these things from people all over the country saying, I just heard recently the LP's anti-Jew. Blown away. I've never heard that. Never, ever, ever heard that that was the case. I challenged the person. I said, what do you mean the LP's anti-Jew? They were shocked. Well, I can't believe you haven't come to this conclusion yourself. Okay, well, I'm shocked too, honestly. Um, but like in like the opposite way that she was. All right? People say, well, there's the people in the LP shunned me or they're too hard to deal with and things like that. Okay, I get that. You know what? There's people in my state affiliate that that I don't like. I don't like working with them. I don't like talking to them. I don't agree with them on things. And these are like different people, like not all one person, I'm saying. You know what? I just don't call that person very often. Okay. Case closed. I mean, I just don't understand some of these, you know, like, like do you go to your job and there's people that 
that uh, you can't stand? Absolutely, and I get that's a little bit less voluntary because, let's be honest, you ain't going to get paid to be involved with the Libertarian Party. I mean, we don't have any money. That's another thing. Okay. All I'm saying is, every state affiliate's different. The party is literally what you make it. Literally what you make it. There's no other way around it. Nicholas Sarwark can go out and say something on a podcast. doesn't affect me in any way. Not at all. Doesn't change what I'm doing. It could change if I vote for him in two years. I think it is when he's up for national chair again. That could be a thing. And if enough people who don't like him join the party and go to the convention, you know what? They can defeat him. They can install someone that they do agree with. Right? Uh, join the Libertarian Radical Caucus. You want to get political, I mean, you want to get principled, join that caucus. Help those guys make a difference. Help move the Libertarian Party in more of a principled, um, you know, anarcho-capitalist direction if you want to do it. Great. That's great. Another thing I'm going to say, just specifically addressing the people that are hinging their opinion on uh, Johnson and Weld, okay? A, we're never going to win. Back to, we didn't have good choices. We're never going to win the presidency. That's not how we're going to achieve electoral success. It is the easiest race for us to get into, which is sort of like a sick inversion of the political process. And the states, the state governments who have set up these electoral laws in this way, they know that. They know that, you know, we have to run for governor every time trying to get established party status here in Illinois. They know we're not going to win the governorship if nobody knows any libertarians on the local level that have done good things for them. Okay. That said, you know, you complain about our candidates all you want. We've had good candidates in state affiliates. That, that is absolutely the case. If you don't know who Lily Tang Williams is out in uh, Colorado, she just ran for Senate. She is awesome. She went on that same podcast, Lines of Liberty. She went on, uh, I think, several other podcasts. She has several YouTube channel, uh, YouTube videos out. She is awesome. Great principled libertarian. Like, seriously, lived through the Mao regime in China has a great story. Right here in Illinois, we had really good candidates. Um, you know, if your state affiliate doesn't have good candidates, but honestly, I mean, you can sit around and complain about it, or you can help them to get good candidates, right? Your other options are to not engage in the political process, which is I'm fine with, um, but I guess if you're going to do that, it'd be nice if you didn't just go around bad the people who are uh, if, you know, like if you're not going to engage in the political process and people who are saying they're libertarians are engaging it in a way that you don't agree with, I, I don't know, man. Like, I don't feel like we owe you anything, quite honestly. Um, you know, the, the other thing is, again, local issues. Uh, I'm going to be on the card Board of Commissioners, which is Council Area Recreation District. I'm, I'm already in unless something weird legally happens because I'm running unopposed for a six-year term. So I'm on the recreation district. Again, another criticism that I hear for, about libertarians is that, oh, you're only ever elected to dog catcher or park district or whatever. Okay, school board, park district, library board, those are things that are important. City councils are real important. There are libertarians that are on city councils right now that are making a real difference, okay? I don't know if these guys are party members. I hope they are. Um, you know, libertarians will make your community better. And the other thing is, having these local positions is how we're going to get success at higher levels. And it's how we're going to organize. And it's how we're going to attract more people to us. A big criticism is the Libertarian Party doesn't get the message out uh, effectively. And that was part of the thing about uh, Sarwark specifically calling out Ron Paul, was that Ron Paul was a good messenger for liberty. Okay, but Ron Paul was in Congress, and he ran for president of the Republican Party. He was able to get on TV a bunch. As bad as the media treated him, they certainly did give him airtime. So it's, it's kind of unfortunate that this time around we got a bunch of media for uh, Gary Johnson, but... A, they used a few editing tricks to make him look bad, 
and B, he kind of blew it in a lot of ways. Um, he maybe said some things that weren't libertarian. That, that's for sure, especially Bill Weld. Again, I'm not apologizing for anything Bill Weld did. Um, but hey, look, you know, when I go to the park district, I'm going to be in a meeting once a month where I can engage with the public and, and talk about the principles of self-ownership. And when I'm arguing against a new tax increase or a new expenditure, new borrowing, which I think they're out of borrowing because they're $30 million in debt, it's a park district, $30 million in debt. Uh, I can talk about the principles of self-ownership, the, the, the idea that taxation is theft and it, and it hurts poor people in the community and, and these things may seem necessary from operating a park district but maybe they're not necessary enough to go taking people's money in the form of property taxes. So I can talk about those things. Will I get the message out? Uh, from what I've seen on these meetings it's going to fall on deaf ears a lot of the time but hey guess what? That should help. You know um, guys like Eric July and Tom Woods and, and uh, Dave Smith and those guys they're running very successful podcasts. They have a very good following. Um, so I'm not going to say that they're not getting the message out. In fact, Dave Smith, uh, whose podcast is sometimes not safe for work, a uh, couple, couple um, bad words here and there, it's called Part of the Problem, a great podcast. If you're an anarcho-capitalist, uh, you should really check that out. He's funny. He has great guests on, and he, he explains things in a really clear way. It's really good. But anyway... Those guys are the guys that are at the top, okay? A lot of this criticism, you know, people are coming at us saying, we don't get the message out, right? What are you doing to make the message out, right? I mean, don't just, you know, you get the message out more effectively. And furthermore, when you're done doing it, then come back to us and tell us how we should have done it the way you did. I mean, we're on your side here, you know what I mean? It's like, it's like there's all these people out there that are saying, we don't like the LP for whatever reason, well, we're not saying that about you either. So that, that's another point that I want to make. Anyway, am I whining? Maybe I am, okay, because I'm a little tired of hearing this. I go out there and I work hard every election cycle. I have a ton of friends that work way harder than I do. Abs you know, absolutely. Hats off to them. Guys that literally are broke and, and just tired and need a vacation after an election cycle, and then all we hear from people on the outside is, well, you guys, you know, well, I can never support you because your video quality or your, you know, your candidate misspoke on something or whatever. Seriously, if you want the LP to be what you want it to be, you can literally make it what you want to be. I mean, you can be a big fish in a small pond, okay? We would love you to come and uh, be an activist with us, or don't. But don't badmouth those that are out there beating the streets. You know, hey, if you're doing your thing, you're a content creator, you're getting the word out, good. Okay, good. And I guess I'm just going to leave it there. Hey, leave me a comment. Share this video if you liked anything I said. Um, even if you didn't like it, go ahead and share it. All right. Uh, again, we'll see you guys. We're going to meet again in February. Um, we're going to have a couple campaigns going on down here in the Metro East area. We're going to make our communities better. See you later.